first. So they're all in now, set to run. 3,413 fences and they're away and Burn Cat Star jumped OK. Big bonus a little slow in the early stages of the race. Staking is up there in uh, company with Burn Cat Star, Miracle Star and Sam Pan Man is going through and uh, just off the Murley Worthy Night over on the inside. Coming towards the next fence now and then Kevy's Luck and uh, settling well back as Kingston Campbell. Fairly bunched field. They're coming along to negotiate the third big fence now. And the leader is the favourite, the top weight worthy night. Over he goes by a length and a half to Sam Pan Man. So the favourites are up one, two, Aorangi on the inside of Sam Pan Man. And they're trailed by Twist of Luck over on the inside in fourth placing. Closely attended wide out by Burn Cav Star. And then Galway Piper going through on the inside from Big Bonus and Miracle Star staking in Kingston Campbell. Fairly tightly bunched down towards the next fence. The first one down the lane. Well, Twist of Luck there back in about fifth placing. Wrapped it pretty hard. Lost ground. And Worthy Knight is coming along towards the next fence. It'll be the last on their next circuit. And Worthy Knight over it. He goes in front by 3A Orangi. Big Bonus had gone up into third placing now. In behind them the Galway Piper and he's followed wider at Burn Cash Star. Sam Pan Man in the centre. Then Twist of Luck staking going through underneath her and then Miracle Star next to last and last is Kingston Campbell. They don't jump another one until they head out towards the hill uh, near the 1700 metres. They've got about 2200 left in it now as they leave the straight and Worthy Knight will try and do it all. Out by a little over a length Worthy Knight. Into the back he goes ahead of Aorangi. Big bonus on the inside of Burn Cash star, a length and a half to Sam Pan Man in fifth outside staking. One and a half the Galway Piper, Miracle Star on the rails, a length and a half to Twist of Luck, and back last of all is Kingston Campbell. So they're about to leave the course proper now and climb the hill at the back of the course. And Worthy Knight out in front with his 67 and a half for Constable, led by two links. Aorangi in second placing, Big Bonus is third, and Burn Cav Star holds fourth, one to staking. Then uh, Kingston Campbell is making some ground on the inside as they leap the first of the double. Wider out is Sam Pan Man around staking. And also as they go to the uh, next fence, the second of that double was the Galway Piper. Miracle start towards the end and Twist of Luck is back at the tail. They're climbing the hill. They've got about 1,400 metres or so to go. And there's a double to meet them up on top of the rise and Worthy Knight the leader. Our rank is second. Burn Cav Star third. Big bonus is in fourth placing over on the inside at the first of the double now. Next two lengths away, Sam Pan Man improving. And then the Galway Piper, Kingston Campbell of Miracle Star. As the leader got into that a little, then came Twist of Luck, who's next to last now. And staking it dropped out to be last of all. They run downhill and they've got four fences to get over now. And... Uh, about to head down to uh, again rejoin the course proper and the leader is Worthy Knight. Burn Cav Star moved up within about a neck of the leader now and two lengths further back in the field is Aorangi. A break of three lengths to Big Bonus and then the Galway Piper, Sam Pan Man. Twist of luck as they come towards the fourth last one. Worthy Knight's been joined by Burn Cav Star. Oh boy the Galway Piper threw the rider high into the air in a heavy fall and Twist of luck went over the top. Coming up towards the uh, next one, the third last one and Burn Cav Star a dash to the lead. Out by two or three lengths Zaya Rangi, Worthy Knight couldn't respond and is back third with Big Bonus who's on his outside and then came Kingston Campbell who's going to save ground through on the inside into the straight and it's Burn Cav Star the leader from Aorangi and Kingston Campbell at the second last Burn Cav Star over it in front Kingston Campbell made a slight mistake Big Bonus makes ground Burn Cav Star from Aorangi coming towards the last now Burn Cav Star comes to the last fence didn't measure it all that well but he's got away with it by two lengths to Aorangi who's battling along strongly in second placing Burn Cav Star clear though for Paddy Kelly and Burn Cav Star got home by a length to Aorangi, third goes to Big Bonus Kingston Campbell is in fourth placing, long break to Miracle Star and then Worthy Knight who couldn't go on after making a lot of the play, next in was Sam Pan Man and Staking is last to go over the line Twist of Luck has cantered past the post and so has the other faller, the Galway Piper but Robert McKenna and Joseph Hatley had uh, some heavy falls there. Now, Robert McKenna's OK. He's all right. He's up and about. But Joseph Hatley is uh, on the track at the moment receiving attention from the ambulance man. He flew into the air like a pole vaulter. As such was the uh, force of the fall. Just the way the horse took that fence, he really flew into the air. Let's hope he's all right. I will get a report on that rider as soon as I can.
OK, Greg, uh, just spectacular stuff, and we will, as mentioned by Greg, pass that along to you as soon as we can, the writer of the Galway Piper, Joseph Haidley. Amazing. Anyway, uh, Doombin. Steve Brim summing up the Gay Waterhouse chances here at Randwick this afternoon. Ali Barber, one of them, and it's the favourite in the first. Joe, we have correct weight at Doombit on their first. Two, seven, six and five. First four, New South Wales, 11,200. Correct weight also Sandown. First four, number two and fourth, $5,630.50. Late mail at Rita's and, uh, oh, real problems over here at the gates. The rider on Bull Quest has quickly bailed out. I refer to Jason Lee. And the bold quest and also antagonize. Well, antagonize has been taken out of the gates. Bold quest drawn on the inside, antagonize in gate number two. And uh, both jockeys uh, have uh, dismounted. And both horses are now out behind the thousand meter starting stores. Are almost set to run, and then boom, up went bold quest. Antagonize may have antagonized him, but. Uh, Antagonise has the jock back aboard now, and I'm referring to Scott Pollard, and it will be interesting to see whether both these horses will run. Into 270, Ali Barber now in New South Wales, 130 a place, races in the same colours as Phoenix Park, has drawn gate number eight here, and he's looking for his fourth win on the trot. Bullquest's rider standing at the back of the prime mover of the stalls, hands on hips. As Antagonize has been passed, fit to run, he's back in again. But uh, it looks as though, yes, the other one's out. Number 10, Bullquest out at uh, 12.31. Number 10, Bullquest at 12.31. They're all set, ready to run. And they're off in the first here at Randwick, and Al Sarkeb, one of the best to break, Monologist and Cayenne, but out quickly, as was Mount Gower. Then the favourite, Ali Barber, and booting through Sharia with antagonised Kenwood Allegro, followed by Dane Beam, and dropping out to last is Storm Zero, run off his legs, down to the 700, and antagonised, booting up on the inside is the leader now. About a half length or so on Cayenne, but in third position, Al Sarkeb from Monologist, Mount Gower, Kenwood Allegro, and then Ali Barber, Dane Beam, Sharia, and Storm Zero brings up the rear. They're homeward bound at Antagonise, just the leader from Kayanban. Al Sarkeb is wider out, followed by Mount Gower. Ali Barber's the deepest now, and he's putting in his claim, and Storm Zero is now switching around him. They come to the 200 marker, and quickly Ali Barber hits the front. Dane Beam going up on his inside. Storm Zero can't win. Yorkie pulls the whip on Ali Barber. He's safely holding Dane Beam, and the good win to Ali Barber. Four on the trot. Ali Barber from Dane Beam, Shari got third storm zero fourth then monologist Kyan Ben Kenwood Allegro Mount Gower antagonize Elsa Kib and the late scratching was Bold Quest 1231 Eastern number two Ali Barber written by Brian York has won the first of the day four on the trot he's a very very genuine horse he, uh, he jumped OK, and then he got back to near enough to second last as they came past the uh, 800, 750, but Brian pulled him out into the open stretches, and uh, down the straight he came at a good gallop, and uh, he's been able to safely hold Dane Beam. And uh, on the tote in New South Wales, pay 270 and 130. Number 11, Dane Beam, will be second. It will pay $2, and the third placing... Uh, to number six and that'll be Sharia Glen Boss and has paid five dollars fourth number one those numbers are official he got run off his leg storm zero two eleven six and one and the winner trained by Gay Waterhouse by snippets from fairy tale time a bay gilding three six starts for four wins all on the trot so he's doing well isn't he sure is Ali Barber in some well-known colors that will be sport now Dan Town are the one to move in and we'll have them right to go for the second on the program. Moved up to the outside barrier. And so they're all in set to run. 1,200. Race two from Sandown, they're away. 
and uh, Magic Bird again a little slow it's settled at the back and Dan Tana ridden from the tail as well from the outside barriers drifted back towards the tail and Environs was the first out exclusive appeal had got away well King Wells is up in third over on the outside followed by True Glow getting a good cart fourth on the inside a length La Rocha a length and a half on again and then Dan Tana moving up on the outside three deep Show and Power in the all white in the centre and two lengths further back is Magic Bird who's racing outside Glefty Environs led coming down the side a neck to King Wells a length and a half away in third placing exclusive appeal who's racing outside True Glow Dan Tan has improved to get the fifth at the turn and then La Rocha. Magic Bird coming wide and they were followed by on again Show and Power and Glefty Environs led round the home turn King Wells second on the outside and then True Glow who's trying for a run along the inside Dan Tan is coming home on the outside of exclusive appeal and next La Rocha at the 250 metre mark now Environs narrowly from King Wells True Glow has eased to the outside to make its run now and Dan Tana's coming on strongly 100 out, 4 across the track True Glow's going home the best in the centre grabbed environs, King Wells, True Glow True Glow wins it by about a half to three quarters photo for the minus between King Wells, environs the rails and Dan Tana the outside clear of La Rocha who's run on fairly late and they were trailed further back then by Show and Power who got to the line and then exclusive appeal Glefty was next and then Magic Bird and a long break on again last of all True Glow, Gavin Eads and Lee Friedman win the second on the program. Had a beautiful run right behind the pace. Gavin tried for an inside run early in the straight. It disappeared on him. He eased over the heels, balanced up, and uh, this two-year-old found the line in very good style. He's had the two runs in this prep, and he's won them both, winning at Werribee in Saturday company last time out and then going on in the City Saturday grade to win race number two. Now, second place and goes to two, Environs, Darren Gauchy. In a close photo finish, wasn't much over the three of them. Third place to number four, King Wells, Peter Mertens. And just missing out in fourth spot was Dan Tana. To, uh, into $3.50, the market has it. Favourite ahead of Cirque du Soleil. No other major move. Sky Trip with some support from the Clary Connors Yard at longer odds. But all of the money has been with those top few in betting. Before too long at three dollars and fifty cents as we go trackside before too long with Ian Craig. Yes, thank you, Brendan. The very, very heavy backing latest for Cirque du Soleil, the Melbourne Philly, beautifully bred by Dane Hill from Piccadilly Circus. And uh, she's closing in on uh, before too long. Currently 350170 before too long. Cirque du Soleil, four dollars and two dollars. And the third pick, number six, at 590. And that is Splish. And she's 190 on the place tote as they commence to move in. Cirque du Soleil ran a very good race in the Magic Knight, coming from well back to finish fourth behind Victory Vane. So the form certainly worked well. And before too long's run in the slipper was good, wasn't it? And uh, she gave a great sight until fading in the final couple of hundred metres. First of the day. And victory to Ali Barber, number two, made it four on the trot and uh, looks as though he's a horse of some potential. Four wins now from six starts and beat Dane Beam, Shariar and Storm 0, 2, 11, 6 and 1. Now let's have a look over here at the 1200 metres, the Keith Mackay quality named in honour of a gentleman who uh, was on the AJC committee for many years and for many of those uh, years that he served was vice chairman. Now before too long is about to be led forward. Sir de Soleil about to come up. Righto, boys. Now let's have a look at the latest on the tote. Before too long, 340. Cirque de Soleil, 390. Right, as John's with us now, and uh, I was just uh, commenting uh, about the uh, late backing for Cirque de Soleil here. Before too long running favourite, only about uh, less than a half point. In front of Cirque du Soleil on track, and uh, it's about a half point on the tape. 350 number two, and 390 number one. Lady Iscariot is about to come forward. Cirque du Soleil, rider in the All Navy. Damien Oliver for uh, the owners, who include uh, the boss of um, Coolmore Australia, up at. Uh, in the Scan region, Duncan Grimley. <clears throat> now, what's happening over here at the starting point? There looks to be only the one to move in. Oh, 
Yes, there is Cirque du Soleil. Damien just uh, rising in the saddle. Back into the pigskin. Yes, yeah, Cirque du Soleil is the only one out. And the Lee Friedman trained filly, isn't she beautifully bred? Dane Hill, there are three Dane Hills in this. Anyway, she's right, Cirque du Soleil, and we're all set, ready to see them run. This is the second of the day, the Keith Mackay quality handicap. And the stalls are back, and they're off this time. Cirque du Soleil jumped nicely from an outside alley, and she's going to be up with the leaders today before too long there. So, too, as they settle down is beautiful finish, and as they race down past the 950, here's a good go for the lead with Lady Iscariot. Going out after before her too long, who leads her a length and a half. Sparkling goes third, and wider out is Cirque du Soleil, followed by Middlebrook a length and a half then to Verstack who's over on the inside and then comes Splish length and a half to make me strong Fortunato beautiful finish drifting back from Sky Tripper and then comes Soprano and last of all Silver Success 550 to go and before too long leads the way from Lady Iscariot wider Cirque du Soleil then Middlebrook over on the inside from Sparkling Gulch and a length of Verstack and then Splish followed by beautiful finish and make me strong well into the stretch and over the rise they travel and before too long a length and a half on Cirque du Soleil in the third posse Verstack followed by Middlebrook it's before too long however 150 to go extending she raced away from on the outside battling on Verstack and then Cirque du Soleil but before too long is putting a gap between herself and Verstack and a great win to before too long Verstack second Cirque du Soleil third then Middlebrook Soprano ran home beautifully and then beautiful finish guide tripper followed by Fortunato a couple of lengths to make me strong silver the success sparkling gulch splish and lady iscariot knocked right up to finish last number two before too long larry cassidy simply too good in the keith mckay quality handicap big run on the golden slipper and she wasn't beaten all that far really despite the fact she was ninth beaten 3.2 lengths in fact and quickly to the lead today and was simply too good for them. Might have a good future. She's paid in New South Wales, 3.21.50. Cirque du Soleil ridden closer to the lead today and found wanting over the concluding stages with Verstack number four getting second and she'll pay $3.40. And number one, Cirque du Soleil third and she's paid $1.50. And number 10 was the official fourth and that was Middlebrook. So it's two, four, one, and ten. Before too long by Belong to Me from Asian Reef, trained by Gary Portelli, and written by L. Cassidy, beating number four Verstack, a Dane Hill filly from Janelle, a Bay filly, a two-year-old, Clary Connors, Corey Brown, and Cirque du Soleil is by Dane Hill from Piccadilly Circus, trained by Lee Friedman. Damien Oliver, Middlebrook fourth, and Soprano got home very well. She's finished officially sixth. She's a Carnegie, and she's a lovely filly, and if she doesn't make it on the racetrack, I'll be very, very surprised. Soprano. Soprano is its name. Ian Craig there at Randwick. Before too long, giving a Belong to Me, a valuable stakes winner in the Keith Mackay, who horse who stands up at win Belong to Me. Some reaction shots coming through from the track. Look pretty happy, the before too long team. Pretty delighted after winning the Keith Mackay. Cheltenham as they head out. Speaking of important races, this upcoming race is the listed Walter Brown. The two-year-olds are going around. Stuart Gower has a runner in each of the feature races here today. He has uh, the three horses who have recently returned from Melbourne campaigns. Hilton Donaldson speaking with Stuart. Up time, 110.22. Important late scratching Cheltenham. Number seven, Fanza is out. Fanza has been withdrawn. And I believe that may have been at the start. Now, Doombin, 17 minutes off. We'll get that confirmed for you. Doombin's due to go in 17. Ratings with raw talent. Ash went the trolley at 76. Size produce, slow grout, your favourite as they jumped. Dance in the sun, pounce to lead them clearly. Lady to hair working up wide, going with it. Volxini is up the rise they go. Star of Dublin is the next one, tucked in on the inside. Validify the next horse, then followed round by Sunwood. Then followed Grout, parked out a bit on the outside as they work up the rise, poking up on the inside. Pauletta now getting back. Country class got squeezed out of that bunch as they went up on top of the rise, a thousand metres to go. NASA Pearls back in that rear group. Only about seven first alone. Last and Dance in the Sun left alone, a length and a half clear. Second, Volksini on the inside, Pulitza, then Lady De Hare, then followed by Star of Dublin on the rails, a half around it, then Sunwood. They followed by Grouts, parked out a bit from Nasa Pearl, then followed back behind these Validify and Country Class is last. At the 600 metres, Dance in the Sun led them by a length. Second on the inside, Pulitza out wider, then is Volksini, Lady De Hare getting handy on the turn, so too Grouts going to come to the extreme as they come around the turn and 
heading across the track now. Dance in the sun, the inside from Pulitzer and out wide. Voxini and Grout down the very outside with Lady De Hair across the track now. And the leaders are still on the inside. Dance in the sun, Grout on the outside might have hit the lead. Lady De Hair coming strongly and Pulitzer's fighting on with Voxini as well. But Grout's in front, 100 metres to go. Too good. Grout raced away, wins the second group one. Dance in the sun, a brave second, third at the line. Pulitzer with then followed uh, Volksini fourth. Next behind these were Star of Dublin, Lady De Hair, then followed by Nasa Pearl. Back behind that one was Sunwood and then Validify and uh, Country Class was the last one home. No doubt. Two Group 1 victories for the boom young Kiwi rider Michael Walker aboard Grout. The ill-fated sire Gold Bros is who this horse is by. And wasn't that impressive in the Group 1 size, albeit minus Dan Rowe, the other boom youngster who was withdrawn because of the track condition. Now that's the scene at Cheltenham. All the jockeys, bar one or two, are out of the saddle, as you can see. More than five minutes past start time at Sandown. And Sandown there behind the start, and the race is due to go in less than five minutes. Sandown due to go in four and a half minutes. Sandown, the ratings won a special from six, then two and five. A quiver at four dollars ten. You've got the late mail from Alf one five six and two. Touch the groom Titans in money for Blue Murder twenty one dollars into fourteen on the tote as you can see. Coming off at eighth at Mornington, shied at the crossing behind Lord Kingston, the horse who's won two but placed nine times in the best of company. Masquerade at sixty five dollars. Now Michael Walker salutes the crowd after taking two year old honours with Grout, the Gold Bros horse. Dance in the Sun second, Pulitzer in third. There's interim details on screen for you. Four minutes. They are moving them in. Melbourne, they are moving in there. Looks like they won't wait. Three dollars for number one Sunday shoes. And these uh, babies are playing up. They are well and truly playing up. OK, Hilton, back with you on replay from Cheltenham as we take you to Sandown. Three to move in now. Last few are getting ready here. Blue Murder, here's Tiffany's Best, the front runner about to come in. And the, the favourite, a quiver. He's uh, tightened up on course. 3.20, you're shopping pretty well on the tote on Super Tab. The A train at 3.40, unders by comparison. $5.80 touched the groom about the same, and $7.90 China Garden. A little better on track. Race over the 21.37, here's Blue Murder coming in now. A quiver to take the outside gate, and we'll have them right to go. Probably suited out there. He doesn't like getting cluttered up in his races. So the favourite moved up on the outside, and they're ready to go. Off now, and a quiver jumped OK with Tiffany's best. Sir Linford slow out the back early. The A train got away well on the inside, and China Garden was out nicely. Coming up towards the post the first time, Tiffany's best is taking a quiver across to the lead now, and they go past the judge with a quiver, a narrow leader. In behind them then in third place in China Garden, followed by Blue Murder. The A train midfield on the inside, and then touch the groom Kawasaki San as they leave the straight masquerade second last, and Sir Linford last of all at the 1600. And Tiffany's Best strode away along the inside and went out with about a three-length lead over a quiver. Four or five lengths to China Garden in third placing and two lengths to Blue Murder, a fast run race. A length and a half, the A train, three quarters away, touch the groom and then Kawasaki, San and Masquerade and three lengths Sir Linford as they go down the back. And Tiffany's Best strode away with a lead of about five lengths. A quiver does all the chasing and there's a similar margin between a quiver and the third horse, China Garden, of about five. Two lengths further back in fourth placing, Blue Murder of the A-Train getting nice cover on the inside. A length further back has touched the groom Kawasaki-san. Another length to Masquerade and three or four lengths to a quiver. They're inside the 1,000 metres and Tiffany's best for the big lead. It's increased that margin. In fact, it's Tiffany's best, probably six or seven now. A quiver in second placing. Six lengths away is China Garden. Two lengths then to Blue Murder. The A-Train on the inside. A length and a half further back touched the groom Kawasaki-san. Masquerade and still three to four lengths to Sir Linford.
Tiffany's best as 10 lengths in front at the 600 metre mark. She's going to corner with a big lead over a quiver. Four or five lengths to China Garden third. Another three blue murder the A train and then touch the groom. Well back in the field then as Masquerade as they swing the corner. Followed by Kawasaki San and Sir Linford at the 400. And it's Tiffany's best by four lengths. A quiver giving chase and then China Garden and the A train in the clear. Down towards the 250. Tiffany's best in front by two lengths. A quiver wants to lay in behind it all the way. Gauchi switched the whip. He's labouring a bit. Here comes China Garden on the outside now. China Garden and a quiver go to the lead together. China Garden's going home the best for Jade DeRose. China Garden beats a quiver. Photo third between the A-Train and Tiffany's best masquerade between them, the chaser. And touch the groom is close up. Followed in by Blue Murder, Sir Linford, and a very long last is Kawasaki-san. Very tight for third, China Garden proving too good and young Jade DeRose in the saddle. Again, apologies, uh, those things do and can happen in racing as we take you back for a replay of the listed stakes race in Adelaide. Set for a start. Racing now. Sunday shoes began quickly, showing nice speed. Glenara through the middle. Milanova's going towards the lead, and Cobra Muse holds the rail presently with Sunday shoes showing superior speeds. Going to get across in front and lead. Worse than midfield now, Tree Line, followed by El Shalali, then Furlang, Lawson, Storm at the 650. Sunday shoes didn't cross down to the rails. Three quarters of a length in front of Cobra Muse from Glenara, Milanova. And then back at the 500 metre mark came Forenza, followed by Tree Line, Lawson, Storm, Furlang. And El Shillelagh around the turn at the 350, and it's Sunday Shoes on the outside of Cobra Muse by a length on Forenza getting into the clear and coming quickly. Sunday Shoes at the 200 with Cobra Muse on the outside of them. Forenza's levelled up. It's Sunday Shoes placed under pressure from Cobra Muse and Forenza. Sunday Shoes, Forenza on the outside ducking in and Cobra Muse fighting back on the rails. Forenza and Cobra Muse they draw to the line and Forenza's won the money. Forenza's won by a head. Cobra Muse was second. A neck away third Sunday Shoes from Millanova, Lawson, Storm and then Tree Line followed by Furlang and then Glenara and El Shillelagh was last in a time of 57.49. 57.49, OK, Hilton. 57.49, Nigel Blackiston and Dan Nicolet combined. Forenza, the Kenny's best pal, Philly collecting the cash there. Third confirmed at Sandown is Tiffany's best, number six, at $2.70. First four, number five in fourth position, New South Wales, $588.60. No clashes happening at Doombin, Larry Olsen, as we come to you. You're all raw talent. Yeah, uh, raw talent, yeah. I had him on top this morning. I'm still leaving him there, Brendan. Uh, lovely type of cult, this. And, of course, if you'd seen his last start where he was off the... Race in the Sapphire last weekend, having its third run back today. Pimpala player number nine, Gordon York Train, recent Newcastle Class 3 winner. And outside of those, Pagad Lewin. Trackside to Randwick for the third race we go. Right, I was just uh, commenting earlier that um, we have the Randwick track record holder for 1,400 metres racing here. Number 11, Maestro Maker. He ran 1.21.14 in establishing the course record on the 9th of January 1999. There was a howling wind blowing on that occasion. Really got behind the horses in the home straight. And the popular pick here is Au Natural on the toe to New South Wales, paying 380 and 170, number five. Number nine, the second elect, and that's um, Pimpala Player, Scott Seamer's ride, 580 and two dollars. Oh, he's, he's third pick, number three at 530 and 190. Sri Lanka's second pick on the tote. And on track, uh, the favourite is clear cut five, Au Natural, in front of uh, Sri Lanka and Pimpala Player. Previous race of the day, won by number two, the favourite before too long, Larry Cassidy beat four, one and ten, and the first two, Ali Barber, the favourite, Brian York beat eleven, six and one. Crowd building here at Randwick as we wait for the Canberra train Pugad Lawin to come into the gates. A few interested spectators over at the starting point with the dispatcher, Billy Cooper who goes onto his stand and we're ready for action. Off in the third of the...